let's get right into it. Number 9. Worlds Around Other Stars Imagine being burned alive for suggesting something that turned out to be completely true. That's exactly what happened to Giordano Bruno back in the 1600s. This guy had the audacity to say that other stars might have their own planets. He went even further and suggested these planets might have life on them. The church wasn't exactly thrilled about these ideas. They were pretty attached to the whole Earth is special and unique thing. So they decided to have a friendly chat with Bruno by setting him on fire. Fast forward to 1992 and scientists found the first planet outside our solar system. It was orbiting a dead star called a pulsar, which is basically the zombie version of our sun. Then in 1995, they found another one around a normal star, and the floodgates opened. Now we've found thousands of these planets, and some of them are pretty wild. We've got planets made of diamond, planets with glass rain, and planets so hot they make Mercury look like a frozen wasteland. The way we find them is pretty clever too. Sometimes we watch stars get slightly dimmer when planets pass in front of them. It's like catching a fly buzzing past a streetlight from miles away. Number 8. The River in the Sky Imagine discovering something huge, but no one believes you. That's exactly what happened to Wasaburo Oishi, a Japanese scientist back in the 1920s. He spent years launching weather balloons and noticed something wild. There was basically a river flowing through the sky. Not water, but super-fast moving air currents. But since he published his findings in Esperanto, the scientific world just kind of shrugged and moved on. That's like posting your groundbreaking research exclusively on MySpace in 2024. Fast forward to World War II, and American pilots are suddenly like, why are our planes getting thrown across the Pacific? Turns out, they'd stumbled right into Oishi's Sky River, what we now call the jet stream. These winds were so powerful they could push planes off course by hundreds of miles. But the Japanese military had a wild idea. They launched 9,300 balloon bombs into the jet stream, hoping they'd drift across the Pacific. Most of these balloon bombs just ended up becoming very expensive fish decorations, but about 300 actually made it to land. Imagine being some random person in Oregon, and suddenly sky mail from Japan explodes near you. Number 7. The Cells Within Our Cells Imagine finding out that parts of your body used to be bacteria. Not just any bacteria, but ones that your ancient ancestors basically kidnapped and forced to work for them. This actually happened with the tiny power plants in your cells called mitochondria. Back in the 1960s, a scientist named Lynn Margulis dropped this bomb on the scientific community. She said mitochondria were once free-living bacteria that got swallowed up by other cells. But instead of being digested, these bacteria struck a deal with their captors. It was basically like, hey, don't eat me, and I'll give you unlimited energy. The other scientists at the time thought this was complete nonsense. They laughed her out of conferences and rejected her papers. But Lynn kept gathering evidence until she could prove these cellular power plants had their own DNA. And not just any DNA, but DNA that looked way more like bacteria than human cells. It's like finding out your phone's battery is actually powered by tiny aliens that moved in millions of years ago. Without this weird ancient roommate situation, complex life probably wouldn't exist. Number 6. Dark Stars Imagine being a scientist in the 1700s, suggesting that somewhere out there, invisible monsters are eating light. You'd probably be laughed out of town. But that's exactly what John Michel did back in 1783. He called them dark stars, and people called him a lunatic. Even Einstein, the guy who basically made black holes possible with his theories, didn't believe they could exist. He was like, nah, that's just some weird math thing. It can't be real. But for almost 200 years, everyone was like, yeah. Whatever, old man. Then in the 1960s, scientists started finding some really weird stuff in space. They saw stars orbiting around nothing. Like literally nothing. Just empty space. Except it wasn't empty. Those invisible monsters Michelle talked about were real. And they weren't just eating light. They were eating entire stars. In 2019, we finally got a picture of one. It looks like a glowing donut in space. If you fell into a black hole, time would slow down for you you'd see the entire future of the universe flash before your eyes, while your body gets stretched out like cosmic spaghetti. Number 5. The Drifting Continents Imagine being a scientist in 1912 and telling everyone that continents move around like giant rafts. That's exactly what Alfred Wegener did, and everyone thought he was crazy. This guy noticed something weird. The coastlines of South America and Africa looked like they could fit together like puzzle pieces. He found fossils of the same ancient reptile called Mesosaurus on both continents. Now, unless this little guy had a yacht to cross the Atlantic, 
Something weird was going on. Vaganer saw all these obvious clues that the continents had moved, but everyone else was like, that's impossible. The other scientists treated him like he was saying the moon was made of cheese. Poor Vaganer couldn't explain how the continents moved. He just knew they did. For 50 years, his theory was treated like a bad joke. Then in the 1960s, scientists discovered something called plate tectonics. Turns out the Earth's surface is like a cracked eggshell, with pieces floating on hot liquid rock. These pieces move around super slowly, about as fast as your fingernails grow. So Wegener was right all along. The continents are basically playing the world's longest game of musical chairs. Number 4. The Big Bang Beginning Imagine being laughed at for saying the universe had a birthday. That's exactly what happened to Georges Lemaitre, a Belgian priest who moonlighted as an astrophysicist. Back in the 1920s, everyone thought the universe was just there, always had been, always would be. But Lemaitre had a wild idea. What if everything we see started from a single point? A cosmic egg that exploded into everything. His fellow scientists basically patted him on the head and said, That's nice, Father. Now go back to your prayers. One of Lemaitre's biggest critics, Fred Hoyle, accidentally gave the theory its famous name. He went on radio to mock it, calling it the Big Bang Theory as a joke. That name stuck harder than gum on a hot sidewalk, but Lemaitre got the last laugh. In the 1960s, scientists discovered a faint glow throughout the entire universe. This wasn't just any glow. It was literally the leftover heat from the universe's birth, like finding the universe's baby pictures. That discovery turned Lemaitre from the crazy priest with wild ideas into the guy who figured out how everything began. Number 3. Rocks from the Heavens Imagine you're living in the 1700s, and you tell a scientist that rocks fall from the sky. They'd probably laugh you right out of the room. Back then, the smartest people in the world thought this was complete nonsense. They believed rocks could only come from Earth, period. Even Isaac Newton himself was like, that's impossible. But then something happened in 1803 that made all these smarty-pants scientists choke on their words. In this little French town called L'Aigle, over 3,000 rocks decided to rain down from the sky. This happened in broad daylight, with hundreds of witnesses. A French scientist named Jean-Baptiste Biot went to investigate. Instead of debunking another fairy tale, he found thousands of weird rocks that didn't match anything in the area. These bad boys came from space. Mother Nature was basically tired of scientists being know-it-alls and decided to literally drop some truth bombs. Before this, if you claimed rocks fell from the sky, you'd be laughed at. But after Lagel, scientists had to admit they were wrong. Number 2. The Sun-Centered Universe Imagine being thrown in jail for saying the Earth moves around the Sun. That's exactly what happened to Galileo back in the 1600s. For over 1,500 years, everyone thought Earth was the center of everything. The church loved this idea because it made humans seem super special. But then this guy named Copernicus comes along with a wild idea. What if the sun was actually the center? People thought he was nuts. But Galileo, being the curious troublemaker he was, decided to check it out with his fancy new telescope. First, he spotted four moons dancing around Jupiter. This was a big deal because it proved not everything revolves around Earth. Then he looked at Venus and saw it going through phases, like our moon. This could only happen if Venus was orbiting the sun, not us. But the church wasn't happy about this at all, so they put Galileo on trial. Picture this, an old man, one of the greatest scientists ever, forced to kneel and say he was wrong. They put him under house arrest for the rest of his life. Legend has it that after denying the earth moves around the sun, Galileo muttered under his breath, and yet it moves. The craziest part is the church didn't officially admit Galileo was right until 1992. That's right. It took them 359 years to say, Our bad. You were right about that whole earth-moving thing. Number 1. Ripples in space-time. Imagine throwing a rock into a pond and watching the ripples spread out. Now imagine those ripples aren't in water, but in the actual fabric of space and time itself. That's what Einstein predicted back in 1916. He said that when really big things in space crash into each other, they create waves in space-time. But these waves are incredibly tiny, smaller than an atom's width. So for about 100 years, everyone was like, yeah, sure, Einstein, whatever you say. Then in 2015, scientists at LIGO detected these waves for the first time. What caused these waves was two black holes smashing into each other 1.3 billion light-years away. To detect these waves, LIGO had to measure a change in distance smaller than one-thousandth of a proton. That's like being able to notice if the distance between Earth and the nearest star changed by the width of a human hair. 
The equipment they used is so sensitive that a truck driving by miles away could mess up the readings. Einstein predicted all this with just pencil and paper. Now we can actually detect these squeezes and bulges in space-time. It's like we gained a new sense. We can now hear the universe's most violent events. Black holes colliding, neutron stars merging, all creating their own unique songs in space-time. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.